it's great to be with you again. Uh, it is an opportunity for us to continue to share God's Word and to study God's Word together, even in the midst of the pandemic uh, that we are going through. So let me encourage you, um, wherever you are, whether you're in your car or at your home, um, outside possibly, and you're watching this, let me encourage you to uh, get your Bible and turn with me to the book of Acts. We're going to be looking at some passages in the book of Acts. And also, if you have a pen and a piece of paper um, and actively take some notes. You know me, I enjoy uh, a whiteboard, and so um, I miss the opportunity to write some key truths and some key applications, but we'll uh, definitely be sharing some, some very timely and some very important truths from the book of Acts today. Before we begin to open God's Word and let it speak to us, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessings upon our time in His Word today. Thank you. Father, we just thank you so much for the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, that you tell us it is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. And, oh, Lord, how we need uh, that light in our lives and in our world today. Lord, in the Word of God, we find the answers to uh, life. We find instruction, Lord. We find encouragement. We find reproof. And Lord, uh, we thank you for the deep truths that are contained in your Word. Thank you that we can open it, um, that we can study it, and that, Father, every time that we read it, it has an effect upon us. It speaks to us. You promise that your word, once read or spoken, will never return void. And so, Lord, we pray that this morning, that you bless our time together as we study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What are we learning? Title of the lesson today. It's a question. It's an open-ended question. What are we learning? Well, let's uh, look at Acts chapter number 2. And let's look at verse number 42. And uh, I'm going to be using two translations today. I'm going to be using the uh, New King James Version, but I'm also going to be using the New Living Translation as well. I like both of these translations, and I use them uh, frequently. So um, there's a couple of things that we need to observe in our world today. Um, I'm calling them two dangers. So the first danger in our world today is that um, there's a, uh, a disregard for the Word of God. Um, there's the questions that are being asked, what's new? What's cool? What's different? And so we're continually looking for the next cool thing the next different thing, the next new thing. And that can be in the way that we think and in the way that we relate to our Lord and the way that we relate to others. There's an excellent resource uh, called Upside Down Living. It is a book that is written by Greg Laurie, one of our uh, current modern-day evangelist, and he um, talks a lot about this type of danger that we have of disregarding God's Word. So it may be something like this in his book. He says, let's not have a sermon. Let's instead have a discussion or a dialogue. We're on a journey together we can talk about the latest books. We can talk about the latest movies. Um, you know what? We don't even have to go to church. Um, we could just meet down at the local coffee shop, and we could order an espresso, and we can sit with each other and talk about the ups and downs of our spiritual journey. Does that sound familiar? Those are words that Greg Laurie uh, felt strongly convicted to write in his book, Upside Down Living. 
And uh, I think we see a lot of that today, a, a disregard of the Word of God. There's a second danger in our world today that Greg Laurie also emphasizes, and that is um, marginalizing the Word of God. So we not only see a disregard for the Word of God, always seeking out what is new, what is different, what is cool, um, what are you doing, what are you all doing, but there's the danger of when we do open the Word of God, there's the danger of marginalizing the Word of God. The Bible may be in the church, um, it may be in the home, but it's kind of off to one side. And um, you, you may see um, something like this, as Greg Laurie writes in, in his book, Upside Down Living. You may see that uh, there, there's a lot going on. There are songs, there's drama, there's film clips, there's testimonies, maybe even an interpretive dance or two. Um, and yes, there will be a brief sermon, but it will be brief. And it usually is a topical type sermon. And unfortunately, there's very little scripture that is involved. There's, there's very little emphasis on the actual word that God has for us. And, um, and so that's marginalizing. Both are wrong. It is wrong to disregard the word of God. It is wrong to marginalize the word of God. So the question becomes again, what are we learning? What are we learning? Um, there's a quote uh, that I like. I do not know where it comes from, so I can't attribute it to the author. Um, I certainly did not come up with it, but the quote says this. It says, you will never achieve being better if you define better by the world's standards. We must define better by God's standards. And I, I love that quote. Um, we'll never know if we're learning something or if we're actually improving or getting better if we're constantly chasing the world's standards and, and, and what is new and different. Um, it's only when we define better by God's standards that we actually know what we are learning and where we are and where we're going. Now, in the book of Acts in the New Testament, this was the template. This was the model of the New Testament church that we see in the book of Acts. There's a couple of things. They valued preaching. They valued good preaching. And they valued the apostles' doctrine. Those are two things that um, we need to focus on in our, not only our church today, and when I say church, I'm expanding beyond Infinity Church, and I'm using church as the whole idea of believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who has come to save man from our sins. I'm talking about the church at large. So we, we need to value good doctrinal preaching, but we also need to value the apostles' doctrine. And we see that in the church, the New Testament church in Acts. So if you have your Bibles, um, look with me, if you will, at Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And I'm going to read this from the New King James Version. And they, being the church members, the church family, the new believers in Christ, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, as Luke records that for us. Uh, there is a consistent trend uh, that we can see in the New Testament church. And, and here's a truth for us. The Spirit of God working through the Word of God to the people of God. Now let me say that one more time. In the New Testament church, as they steadfastly held to the apostles' doctrine and to good, sound, fundamental preaching, 
we see that the Spirit of God worked through the Word of God into the hearts of the people of God. So you see how that flows, those concentric circles, if you will, how they combine with each other. And so we can go on and we can talk about the church, but we can also bring that down and personalize that to my life and to your life. Um, and we can find that truth in Acts because you see what is true of a church is also true of an individual because the church is made up of you and I. It is made up of individuals. So if we are truly filled, you and I, filled with the Spirit of God, then we will absolutely love the Word of God. We will love to get into it. We will love to study it. We will love to talk about it, to discuss it, to make discoveries in it, and then to apply that into our hearts. And, and through the Word of God, we are Spirit-filled people. The believers in Acts loved the Word of God. It was their focus. It was their bedrock. It was their foundation. So let me pause just a minute as we consider what we are learning today in these times and ask just a few open-ended questions. What is your focus today? What is my focus today? Where do you spend most of your time? Where do I spend most of my time? What draws you today? What captivates you today? And lastly, may I ask, where is your Bible? Something wonderful happens when we study God's Word. When we study it individually and when we study it, study it collectively like we do um, at the gathering, like we do on Sunday mornings, like we do during the week, during our small group Bible studies, something wonderful happens. We read and we study and we make discoveries together of God's Word. God has ordained good preaching, doctrinal preaching, as a primary function of the church. That is one of the, the main objectives of the New Testament church, is good preaching. There are others, such as building up the saints, such as taking care of the sick and the needy and the poor. But it all starts with a solid foundation of good, accurate, biblical preaching and teaching. And I want to just say uh, in this lesson today that I am thankful for our pastor, Philip Long, who preaches the Word of God, who, who spends time in the Word of God, in his preparation, and who takes the most difficult passages of the Bible and shares those with us and preaches to us. Um, it is wonderful for us to have the pastor um, that we have who believes in the Word of God and effectively preaches it. I am also thankful for the many good Bible teachers that we have at Infinity Church. For us to be um, a small church, we are blessed with a tremendous number of great Bible teachers. And so we want to continue to make that the focus of everything that we do. Applaud, abide, advance. If you want to, to look over in 2 Timothy um, for just a moment, uh, just a few pages over in your Bible, I want you to, to camp out there in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, and we're going to look at verses 2 through 4. And here um, we see the writer of Timothy, Paul, writing to his young protege, writing to this new kid on the block, if you will, Timothy, a new pastor, a younger man than Paul, 
we see Paul gives both instruction and a warning to Timothy in these passages. So I'm going to read this passage from the New Living Translation, 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 through 4. This is Paul writing a letter to Timothy. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. Some translations use the word fables. I am afraid that we are becoming a people of itchy ears. Paul so accurately describes the times that we were in, in today. The itchy ears that people have. The what's new. The what's different. What are you learning? That sounds more exciting. That's more cool. We need to be careful about staying grounded and based in the authority of the Word of God. I love what Martin Lloyd-Jones says. This is his quote. Come to the Word of God. Stop asking questions, but start with the promises of God in their right order. He says, we should say, I want the truth, whatever it cost me, and then bind ourselves to that truth. I love that. Many times in our learning, we're asking too many questions, and the answers are already right here in God's Word. We need to say, I want the truth, whatever it costs me, and then we need to bind ourselves to it. Let's look back at Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Uh, I just have one final thought that I want to leave with us this week. Um, yes, we definitely need anointed preaching. It is the foundation of the church. It is the, the pillar of the church. But there is also something that we need, and that is what Greg Laurie re refers to as anointed listening. So there's anointed preaching, but then there's anointed listening that also takes place. If you look back in Acts 2.42, as we read earlier, notice the people continued steadfastly. There's two important words there. Continued means ongoing, not up and down, not in season and out of season. It means exactly what it says. Continue. And then the other important word is steadfastly. The stickability. Even when it's not cool, when it's not new, when it's not different, when other people seem to be making other discoveries, steadfastly means just that. In season, out of season, one generation to the next generation, steadfastly. These words are so important. So there is the idea, as we finish here, there is the idea of attention, and there is the idea of intention. So as we hear good biblical teaching and preaching, then we need to be offer our attention, and we need to be intentional about how we anointed, listen to the Word of God. There's a desire for the Word of God and an openness to receive that Word of God. I hope that this morning, this lesson has been a blessing to you. Um, I will share with you personally that I needed this lesson this week. It has been a tremendous encouragement to me 
and it has been um, a great help to me um, as I have been reminded by the Word of God to continue steadfastly in doing what is good and in staying in the Word of God so that the Spirit of God can fill my mind and my heart. Thank you.